Fall River is a 17.1 mile long tributary of the Big Thompson River in Laramie County, Colorado. The river's source is near the Alpine Visitors Center in Rocky Mountain National Park. It flows down a canyon and over Chasm Falls before a confluence with the Big Thompson River in Estes Park. So basically they're camping on the side of a portion of this like river network. Yeah. Just after a waterfall. So that's on the, I looked at a couple of pictures. It looks pretty, Chasm Falls looks pretty cool. So it looks like a sweet spot to go camping at. This area of Fall River is located kind of in the center of Rocky Mountain National Park. This park was founded uh, quite a long time ago, January 26, 1915, by President Woodrow Wilson. It's a pretty popular park. In 2017, they had over 4.4 million visitors in the park. It's, and this was its second highest annual visitation. Interesting facts about the park. You know, people have been visiting this park for a very long time. Records go back to 11,000 years where projectile points have been found that are believed to have been used to hunt mammoths. So just picture, you know, these giant hairy elephants walking around in Rocky Mountain National Park and kind of early hunters, you know, throwing spears at them. I was going to say they're taking them down with arrows and spears and stuff. That's that's insane because they're so big. I mean, even try think about like trying to get an elephant now with like a spear. Right. How much effort it would take. This park has been visited for thousands of years. It's your, you know, typical alpine climate. The highs in the upper 60s in July to the lows in the teens during the winter months. Now, Joe, uh, Capitol Peak, is that in Rocky Mountain National Park? No, it's it's south of it quite a ways. So a capital is on BLM land just outside of Aspen. From what I read about Capitol Peak, it sounds like they do experience extreme weather. Yeah, I mean, well, I was there and at at the foot, it was about 95. It was a hot it was the hottest day of the year when we got there. Wow. And a week before then the mountains got two feet of snow. Wow. So like it was blizzard. That's why there were all the the avalanches and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, Rocky Mountain National Park has a similar type of a reputation for extreme weather events. They've got a lot of complex, complex interactions with elevations and slopes going on. It, you know, it causes a lot of moisture to form over the, the park. And you've got a lot of different air masses meeting. You've got warm, moist air from the south meeting kind of Arctic cold air masses from the north. A lot of extreme weather, extreme snow events uh, in the summer. Anybody, anybody who's hike, been hiking in the mountains knows that it can go from the 90s to, you know, thunder snow even sometimes, depending on elevation. So you got to be prepared for everything. Yeah, and if you look at the location of the state and even that park, it's almost like in the center of the country to where like the Great Plains are, and then you have like the desert below it, and like. It's almost like an area right in the middle where just stuff would all mix together. So you get that really weird mix of weather. Yeah. Um, so animals in the park, this will this will play a factor in our case in a little bit. But there's there's quite a few predators in the park. You've got Canadian lynx, foxes, bobcats, cougars, black bears and coyotes. The You know, the one animal that's missing from the park is grizzlies. And they were moved, removed from the park in the early 1900s. So uh, no grizzlies, but you still got a lot of predators in the park. Especially for small children. Yep. You know, the, the mountain lions and the cats in the area are really a big concern. Yeah. Highest elevation in the park is Long's Peak at 14,200 feet. I believe there's over 124 named peaks and at least of at least 8,700 feet. So a lot of mountains. Great, great place to go hiking and climbing. Oh, I want to move there. <laughs> Every time I go there, I'm like, all right, time to just stay. Yeah, just live out in the woods. <laughs> yeah, I, I would. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, besides animals, the biggest dangers for people is going to be exposure. And this is pretty common at any alpine region. Uh, with that many peaks at that high of an elevation, you're going to have a lot of exposed areas above the tree line. You're going to be exposed to uh, an environment that has less oxygen than you're used to. Uh, winds, cold temps, lots of precipitation. Uh, so, it, you know, it's a pretty dangerous environment. It can also be, you know, pretty nice if you catch it at the right time. You just got to keep an eye in the sky because you get up there, there's nowhere to take shelter above the tree line. Yeah, once you're at Alpine, it's it's game over if you're in a storm. Yeah, and, you know, one of the other big killers when people, you know, go up in elevation is altitude sickness. So 
uh, besides, you know, exposure, you know, some people really succumb to altitude sickness a lot easier than others. So that's something you also have to watch out for. So that is kind of a quick overview of the 